Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, I am trying out some new tech and I've had to kind of rearrange my entire studio to fit all of this in and kind of move things around. Uh, so if you guys notice anything different about the, the camera angle or any of the quality of the video or anything like that, that's probably what's going on. I'm hoping that this will make my videos a little bit better and help me stay a little more organized. I can actually fit my Bluetooth uh, keyboard all the way onto the desk now, and I don't have to look over the top of my laptop uh, screen to see my other monitors. So, so far I'm loving this setup, but if you guys wouldn't mind, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. If you find my video to be better, let me know. If it, uh, for some reason, if this makes me more awkward, <laughs> and yes, I can be more awkward, believe it or not. Um, so let me know that as well. Um, if it's worse and you want me to go back to my old setup, let me know that. Or if there's no difference, if you guys can't tell any difference between this video and my past videos, let me know that as well. A simple one word comment, you know, either better, worse or same works. And any feedback beyond that is always welcomed and appreciated. Um, and it helps me to know what's working and what's not. So if you guys wouldn't mind, just let me know in the comments after watching this video what you guys think of this whole new setup. So in this video, we are going to get into some information and just a different perspective um, on how to look at what is going on in the crypto market. But before we do that um, and get into all of that, guys, I want to jump over. And as always, I am supporting for them Animal Sanctuary. Now, this is their website. And as you can see right here on their front page of their website, they've got that donate now button um, right here that you can see. Um, but they've also got a Patreon. They've got Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. And you can kind of just see all about them and their animals and what they're doing over there. So if you guys wouldn't mind please go over and help these animals out. It uh, means a lot to me. Also, they are a 501c nonprofit. So everything you donate to them um, also helps you out when it comes tax time. So yeah, go over and help them out. Now, the first thing that I want to look at is uh, some ETF information. We're going to get into uh, the ETF inflows. I'm going to jump over to this chart here. Um, and as you can see, this is the last 15 days. Let me just scroll out on that so you guys can see that a little bit better. So as you can see, we have had 15 straight days of inflows. Now, if you look at these numbers, uh, that the ETFs are buying each day down here at the very bottom in this this green. Um, sorry, right here in this green at the very bottom. You you get to see um, how much they're buying in comparison to that 450 Bitcoin that is mined each day. And you can quickly see that there is a big demand shock just in the ETFs. Now, I have run the numbers of these last 15 days. I've added them up and divided them by 15. And what it, it shows when you run all the numbers is that the ETFs are actually buying on average five times the amount of newly minted Bitcoin. So they are buying five times that 450 Bitcoin that is being mined into existence each day. That's huge. And uh, to add to that fact, um, if you jump over here, 
This was just yesterday, and it says, uh, let me zoom in here for you. Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs bought 456 Bitcoin today, more than 100% of the daily new value, which is 450. So we see massive demand from the US Bitcoins. The Hong Kong Bitcoins are really starting to take off now. Um, now I'm going to jump over and we're going to look at the charts on TradeView um, during this same 15 day period. You guys can see right here is that 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 big green daily candle. That is the first day of these 15 days that we've seen 15 days straight of Bitcoin ETF inflows. So you can see we, we did have that jump up there on that first day, but ever since we've kind of been just tra trading down and maybe sideways since then, you know, and that's up to this last day yesterday. So 15 days of inflows and yet the price of Bitcoin has really just, you know, we came up that first day and really just since then has traded down and sideways. So this really begs the question as to what is going on. And in my opinion, there's two things that are kind of keeping Bitcoin's price down. Now, the first being that unfortunately, the little guys, retail investors, are selling their Bitcoin to the ETFs. So I want to jump over to another chart. Um, this was just from a couple days ago, but this is the most recent data that I could find on this. Um, I'm going to jump over to this. So you can see up here, this, this top line, um, it's, uh, zero to one. Oh, now I'm too far in. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, zero to one Bitcoin is this top line here. And for the last 30 days and year to date, we have typically been selling. The little guys have been selling. The medium guys on the on the 21st, um, they had they bought, but you know, last 30 days and year to date, they've been selling. And the 10 to 100 Bitcoin guys have also been selling. The only guys that have been bit, that have been <laughs> accumulating over the last 30 days and year to date have been the big guys. They've been, you know, the big ETFs and the big, big whales have been accumulating while everyone else has been getting shaken out and selling to the big guys. And that's pretty sad to watch, guys. I, this is not what I like to see. I hope most of my viewers are, I, I can instill some confidence in you guys, but this is something you guys got to watch. Like, you don't want to be selling your Bitcoin to the ETFs, especially, you know, in times like right now. Um, so the second thing um, that is probably keeping Bitcoin down is that there are short sellers that are trying to supp suppress the market. Now, you guys might remember that a month or two ago, I was saying how there was a short squeeze setting up at the $74,000 level. Well, those shorts are still in play and have only intensified, guys. I'm going to jump back over to another chart, another tweet. Now, um, this was just uh, June 1st, this was put out. Now, it says when Bitcoin goes above 74,000, over 4, uh, 4 billion, 800 million, 4.8 billion in Bitcoin shorts will be liquidated. Guys, I'm going to zoom in on this chart a little bit, but you can see 
this is kind of a heat map of uh, Bitcoin shorts. And you can see right here at this 74 to $75,000 level, you know, once it gets into the lighter green and the yellow, the intensifying yellow, that means there are more shorts that will be liquidated at those levels. Now, guys, jumping back down right here at this level, this was just uh, this last pump that we saw, you know, when when uh, the ETFs, uh, the Ethereum ETFs went um, kind of haywire and were approved. This is when we saw this massive jump up. But you can see we had a whole lot of shorts right there. And once we hit that level, it just shot us up right here. So you can imagine once we get up into this $74,000 level, we've got those two levels that are really, really bright yellow right here. And once we hit through that, once we hit through that first one, it's just going to shoot us right through that second one. And the second one is just going to be rocket fuel. Okay. It's going to shoot us clear, clear up. Now, why anyone in their right mind would short the best performing asset over the last 15 years? I have no idea. But one thing I know for sure is that no one cries for the short seller. I mean, they are kind of the villains of markets and they try um, to prey on people and companies just like like vultures. Now, this is exactly why people banded together during the GameStop saga to wreck the big hedge funds that were trying to kill GameStop. So no one is going to cry for these short sellers. They're going to lose a fortune. And they should they should have better known better. <laughs> you know, you don't short such a great technology as Bitcoin. Now, as I reported yesterday, um, Australian Bitcoin ETFs just went live today. But also, guys, we just had this news break today, and that is that Thailand just approved their first Bitcoin ETFs. Guys, the dominoes just keep falling. And this shouldn't be a time when people are so easily shaken out and selling their Bitcoin to the big guys. But sadly, that is exactly what is happening. I just hope you guys are taking advantage of this sideways action to dollar cost in because by the end of this year, I am confident that we will be looking back at $70,000 Bitcoin and wishing we could buy at these prices. So in the news again, um, we have this news. Um, and the banks are in trouble again. Now, this probably isn't a surprise if you're if you've been watching my channel, but is uh, this is a new report from the FDIC, which says that U.S. banks are on the brink of collapse, five hundred and seventeen billion dollars in unrealized losses um, due to things like commercial real estate. And also says that 63 banks, the FDIC is saying that 63 banks are at risk of failing. Now, this report by the FDIC goes on in in pretty classic fashion and says that, you know, 65 banks is really not that big of a deal. It's only about one or two. 2% of the U.S. banks. And so it's really not that big of a deal, guys. So this is the FDIC kind of jumping out in front of some news, but also trying to downplay it so that they don't shake confidence in the banking system. But this is why, guys, this is why uh, the Treasury just the end of last month 
the 29th of May, uh, started doing buybacks to kind of help alleviate some of that pressure on banks. And it's why the Federal Reserve wants to cut rates and start injecting liquidity into the banking system, which will only debase the currency and cause more inflation. Now, when that inflation hits assets um, or hits, you know, and we start feeling it, assets like Bitcoin will, will rise against the dollar and more awareness about Bitcoin and protecting yourself against fiat debasement, um, you know, will, you know, more awareness will come because of that. And more people will flood into Bitcoin and Bitcoin will go up and the dollar's uh, value will continue to decrease. You know, it's just kind of a vicious self-feeding spiral that we're we're in for, guys. This is going to happen. Now, uh, this all goes to say, you know, don't get shaken out of your crypto positions just yet during these boring sideways consolidation periods. This is not the time to be uh, shaken out of your positions. You know, historically, we see these sideways action um, after the halving, which I have actually been saying this for months now. So this isn't really unexpected. This, this boring sideways action that we're having right now is completely expected when you look at the cycles of what Bitcoin does. But we will look back at this time, guys, this boring time where nobody cares about Bitcoin and everybody's, you know, losing interest. We're going to look back at this time as being the calm before the storm. So take advantage, stack your sats and get ready for blast off. So guys, after seeing this video, I again would very much appreciate it if you let me know what you guys think of this new setup. Was this video any better? Was it worse? Um, or was it pretty much on par with my previous videos? Please let me know in the comments. You know, again, all it takes is just one word answer, better, same, or worse. Um, and anything else beyond that is always appreciated. Now, also remember to, to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And also, don't forget to go back over and hit the link in the description of my video and go over to For Them Animal Sanctuary and help those animals out. As always, guys, thank you, and I will see you in the next video.